gospel reveals the grace of God. He reveals it. He shows us. So that's why we, oh, you know, if things ain't happening for us, uh, maybe something I'm doing wrong. And yes, I think we have to examine our hearts when something is not right. I, I check my heart. Lord, am I, am I doing right? How many of you have ever felt sometimes, and you can't understand it, but sometimes you feel like there's a cloud over your life? Like, you know, you praying and it's just like this, something is not right. Well, there's a, we need to see God concerning those things. But one of the things I need to make clear to you today that you need to stop the devil of, of trying to rob you, deceive us, and rob us of your benefits that are in Christ to those that love him. Hi, my name's Angel Falcon, and I'm honored to be uh, before you here today. We believe that there's no greater responsibility entrusted to us as believers uh, to give you, teach you the Word of God. I trust that you will be richly blessed by what you're about to hear. Remember that as we increase in the knowledge of God's Word, His blessings are sure to fall upon us. Trust you. to someone say you made it hallelujah today we complete seven days of our 21 day consecration hallelujah and you made it you're here today you are alive and well it's glad that you're here christopher good to see you the wife it's great to see you um i want to There's something that really is burning uh, hot in my heart. And simply because I, I know, I know that life isn't easy. I know that life is, there's battles. I, I, it, you know, sometimes you look around and says, you know, when is this ever going to stop? Am I talking to somebody? I mean, stuff, and I realize, and I see people, and because, I guess, that I'm a shepherd, um, you know, I, I, I get calls, I, I pray with people, I hear the needs, I, I hear the challenges, and, you know, and, and I see, I see what God's people go through. It ain't no joke, man. It, it isn't easy. You know? And I hear that, their, you know, I, I see what they go through emotionally, I see the struggle uh, uh, not, not just, not those times when just, you know, uh, you know, temporary problems. I mean, these reoccurring problems that seems to kind of stick his head every time, you know, that, that for years, if you would. And I see, I see, you know, God's people go through some stuff, but we know that the word of God says, this is but a light affliction. What we go through is he calls it a light affliction. <sighs> Sometimes I wish he didn't put that in there. But he said that it is a light affliction. And so in light of seeing people, I, sh I started sharing something this past Wednesday. Um, and and there's so much more to draw from what I shared this past Wednesday that I, I just, I, I'm looking to kind of help uh, 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 draw a little more concerning, uh, you know, the challenges of life and how to deal with them. I think sometimes, here's, here's my point. Uh, here's, I, I see, I see the pain, I see the struggle, I see, you know, people hanging on, and some people are just so passionate about, you know, they're standing. But yet I know they're going through some stuff. But you couldn't tell by looking at them. Because they're just, ah, <laughs> Jesus is Lord. All hell's breaking loose, but they look all together. 
But then there's those that are that are going through all hell and they're falling apart. You know what I'm talking about? Stressed out about so many different things, and 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 I I, I struggle. I struggle. I struggle with the fact that there is an enemy, an adversary, that Jesus very clearly teaches us about. So be, don't be fooled and be not ignorant of the devil's devices. But I know that he is hard at work robbing, robbing God's children, his own beloved, of what rightfully belongs to them. Now, there ain't nobody here in their right mind. Let me just fix that a little bit because some people are not in their right mind. But anybody in their right mind, who would allow a thief to break into your home, break through a window, climb in, you know, and you're in there, and he goes in there, and he just, he's going to sit down on your sofa. Who in their right mind is going to let, you know, you be scratching your head. Is this guy, is he for real? No, nobody in their right mind will allow anybody to intrude uninvited. Someone you don't know break into your house. I remember one time when, when the psychiatric center here in Central Iceland was open. And my friend that I worked with for many years, his name was Mike Tyson. Uh, uh, actually, that was his name, Mike Tyson. <laughs> Go figure. But, um, and, and he went to his house for lunch. Ain't nobody in his house. Everybody's house is working. He went in for lunch, and one patient had walked in, and he's watching TV. <laughs> He goes, uh, who are you? He's thinking mom or dad brought somebody, you know. Who are you? You know, turns out, yeah, well, I just walked in. <laughs> we, we think that's funny, man, but, un, you know, people who are uninvited, obviously, if they, if they broke in there, they have ill intention. I'm not going to ask question. I'm going to kick you out. Pastor, you're a man of faith. I'm a man of faith. I'm going to believe just like David. I'm going to take out Goliath. I'm going to take him out. And I'm going to, you know, ask questions after he's outside the house. But we let, we let the devil come in. And bring, I mean, I mean, come and destroy what you work hard for. The Bible says he's a thief. He's a thief. He's a thief thief to come to steal, kill, and destroy. He's looking to take you out. So one of the things that's so important for believers to understand, and I'm, I'm, I'm amped. I am. I am because I'm mad. I am. I am. I'm cleaning this up. I'm, I'm mad at how the devil so strategically, relentlessly, relentlessly tries to rob us of our peace, rob us of our joy, rob us of our relationship, rob us of the soundness of our mind. I'm upset. And as I, I was, you know, just meditating on that, I says, you know, Lord, why is it sometimes even God's own children? It, why would God put in his word? He says, be not ignorant. Of the devil's strategies, his methods. Why would God say that in his word if, if the devil wasn't cunning enough to rob you of something that rightfully belongs to you? Uh, some of you all looking and say, okay, why do you put this chair in here? I just want to illustrate something to you. Not right now. <laughs> but I want you to look at this. Because it's... I. I I'd rather have a, a person up in here. You know what? Let me just have a let me have a person up in here. Aha, uh, 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 Eric, your little kid there. What's his name? Uh, Bay. The youngest little kid in the house here. I'm gonna make him feel so comfortable right now. But I want you to look at him as a son. He's he's my son. Sit down. Just as I'm temporarily borrowing him. So when he's a son, I want you to look at him as, as someone who's a part of my family. 
Because so often we don't understand, you know, what God tried to clearly express to us in his word. The Bible says that before you were even deserving of salvation, he loved you. That means nothing you ever did compel God to move on your behalf. He loved you in spite of our, what we were doing, in spite of our sins, in spite of our fallen nature. He loved you. The Bible tells us really quick. In, uh, in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave, gave, surrendered, sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a battle that we're living in. Amen. But here it is. God is clear. I want you to understand. God is clear that he loved you. And salvation is a gift. It is a gift. A gift. I made that very clear on Wednesday. But for, for sake of you guys, salvation is, is not merited. God, through Christ Jesus, made you acceptable to the beloved. Are you hearing me? So when, when we accept Jesus, you become God's son or daughter. You become a part of his family. When you confess him as Lord, the Bible says you, be, you, know, he, you, you have entered into his beloved. So salvation is a gift. Are you hearing me? You can't work for it. But the evidence, listen very carefully, but the evidence, I've said this all the time because some people can run. That means no matter what I do, I'm saved. Mm. You are saved. Amen. D does, do you have to be perfect to go into the kingdom of heaven? You got that right. You, how can we? We're a work in progress. Look at yourself. Just, I'm sure I can find some people that says you are not perfect. I'm sure I can go home, talk to your spouse and find some, you know, some things that you could strengthen up a little bit. So salvation has to do with, with us accepting the gift that Jesus represented. He took upon himself our sins, you know, that separation, right? So part of redemption that is so necessary, and, and here's, here's, here's the thing. Sometimes the Lord, the Lord told me something as I was meditating on this and I was sharing it on Wednesday. I asked him, Lord, why is it then that sometimes God's people, and I'm not trying to say that God's people, once you accept Jesus as Lord over your life, that you're not going to go through some stuff. No. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I do know also that the enemy comes to try and rob you of your peace, rob you of those things that Jesus promised to give you. You see how? So it's important that you understand that if anybody tries to roll up in your house trying to bring something that you don't want, there ain't nobody here in their right mind will even allow a salesman. No, ma no matter how good that vacuum cleaner is, to try to sell you something you don't want. So, I see the struggles in the lives of even believers. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, help me understand. I don't, you know, help me understand. And I know because you know, I've, I have my battle scars. Amen. I fight things, you know, greater things sometimes, less things to other, but I'm fighting. I'm fighting at different fronts, different ways. So I know, you know, I know what it is to fight, but I also know that I need to distinguish very clearly when the devil trying to rob something that God wants to have for me. So scripture tells us, now I, I want to read several scripture verses to help set the stage of what I'm trying to help you, uh, uh, show you. But here's, let me, let me get back to what I shared with you. This is what the Lord told me. Oftentimes, 
my people think they always, they don't, they know that God can heal them, that God can intervene, but they're not always sure if they are deserving. They're not always sure that they earned it. Did you hear me? And oftentimes, and simply because nature has shown us that we, everything that we get, we got to work for. Everything we get, we got to work for. Our degrees, we got to work for. Our education, we got to work for. If you want a, a roof over your head, we got to work. Our boss, you got to please him. You got to make sure you're doing your, your due diligence to make sure. We, everything we do, really, socially, we, we got to earn the love of our significant, uh, 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 you know, of our spouse, or, or, you know, while we're dating, you know, that we have to earn that. Isn't that true? It just don't happen just because, wow! Well, that might help a little bit, but but you got to work it. Somebody turns to someone and say, you got to work it. I know you thought that you were Mr. GQ, but, you know, after she got past the glitter, she had to see the substance. Mm. Somebody turned to me and say, my, my, my. <laughs> so here, here's what I, you know, so, so we, what is it about us that we know what God says, but I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if he wants to give it to me. And, and so the Lord says there's, 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 you are, doesn't the Bible says that a person that doubtful won't ever receive? A double-minded person. You know what a double-minded person? The Bible says is unstable in all their ways. And that person, don't think that that person will receive anything from God. That's what the word says. So that means you need to be convinced. Convinced as to, okay, well, well I know God wants to help me. Uh, you have got to be convinced in your heart that everything about God was compelled by his love and compassion and mercy for you. Everything about God was to help you through the storms of life. And sometimes those storms had to teach you some real important lessons of life. And so I believe that the trials of life uh, are there to, to, to a degree to bring you to greater maturity. And if you ever find yourself struggling over the same thing and in a cycle, that means you haven't learned the first time. So you got to repeat 101. Before you get to 102. But Jesus tells us something. Everything about the Father was, is, is grace. Undeserving favor. Simply because I love you. If this is my son, I love this kid. There's nothing I would do for this kid. And even though he's undeserving, how many parents have undeserving? I mean, some of us, come on, we, we've, got, we've got all this. <laughs> yeah, Harry, did, you didn't clean your room. Did you, did you put out the garbage? When the report card comes home, you know, <laughs> is this really your best? I mean, we can go on and on. And hey, Would you leave your sister alone, your brother alone, and stop fighting, fighting? You know. They love each other to death, but they, in the process, they, they almost kill each other. You don't know how many times I'm, you know, I'm peaceful at home, you know, just relaxing in the den, and, and all of a sudden I hear, pow! <laughs> my son, my son's going to be a pitcher because he throws everything. So if you come to my house, make sure you learn to duck and weave. Because no matter how many times I tell him, don't throw in the house, don't throw anything in the house, you know, it has a tendency of bing. And poor little his sister comes with her, you know, did you throw something? No, no. Then what's that dent in the forehead of your sister? So we, we have the issues. We have, those, those, those are just some basic, you know, you know, but is he still my son or daughter? You know, you can make, interchange it. You you. When you're part of the family, see, understand, here's what I'm trying to do, and I feel compelled by the Lord. People need to understand the, the many-sided 
parts of grace. That when he saves you, you ain't perfect. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you are justified. You are now in right standing. You stand before God as innocent simply because of your position. Say that with me, position. So now he's a son. Living in my house, he ain't working. But does he benefit from me? Why? Because of his position, because of his relationship with me. Grace is like that. Grace is like that. The grace of God is, it has more to do than, you know, in your position as, your, as his son and daughter. So don't struggle whether you deserve it or not. If Jesus said and promised it in his word, just stand firm and believe God and resist the devil when he tries to try to give you something contrary. For me, when God promised me, he's, I believe his promises are yes and amen. That's what his word says. So for me, I'm convinced of the sovereignty of God. And if I stand firm on, on it, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to experience his manifested will and promise in my life. So it's grace, but he receives it in positionally. Now he might be, you know, he's in the process. He's in mature. He's growing up. He's learning. Amen. He's going through the stages. This is still my family. Will he make mistakes? Does that still exclude him from sonship? Huh? Does that stop him from benefiting from my house? Does that stop me from feeding him? He's an heir of the kingdom of God. He is co-heir with me. Hallelujah. You, you hear, uh, I'm trying to drive home a principle because there are still areas about grace that we are yet to grab hold of. But the Bible tells us that, that the gospel reveals the grace of God. He reveals it. He shows us. So that's why we, oh, you know, if things ain't happening for us, I'm, maybe something I'm doing wrong. And yes, I think we have to examine our hearts when something is not right. I, I check my heart. Lord, am I, am I doing right? How many of you have ever felt sometimes, and you can't understand it, but sometimes you feel like there's a cloud over your life? Like, you know, you praying and it's, it's like this something is not right. Well, there's a, we need to see God concerning those things. But one of the things I need to make clear to you today that you need to stop the devil of, of trying to rob you, deceive us and rob us of your benefits that are in Christ to those that love him. doesn't change now the Bible says that when we come to God amen it, it has to do with our position we are now in Christ Jesus look at what the Word of God said let's just go to the word um, I want to reread a scripture verse that I shared um, this past Wednesday and I'm just gonna further draw some 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 beautiful um, principles out of this scripture verse <clears throat> Concerning grace, look at what the word says. It says, verse four, we'll begin at verse 4. Ephesians chapter 2. <laughs> it says, all right, you, wanna, you mind telling me what chapter? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, right? In our trespasses, he made us alive together with. Say together with. See, it's a position of, of now, uh, uh, again, it's a position that we have in him. Together with Christ, by grace, you have been saved. By grace. That in the ages to come, verse 7, I'm sorry, verse 6, it says, And was raised, and he raised us up together, 
and made us, you see the position, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ. So, so this young man benefits because now his, when he makes, now he's on a relationship. Now remember, what, caught, what, what, what establishes our relationship? What establishes it? He made Jesus Lord over his life. So he's a part of God's family when he does that. Now, there's some things about redemption that he's going to have to learn, the process. But salvation, you didn't earn it. He's too young. He's, he's too inexperienced. He's still in, so too immature. But when he acknowledges that he needs a savior, when he acknowledges that, he's, that, that, that he is sinful in need of a savior, right? Because he, he was in his fallen nature. When he confesses Jesus is Lord, the Bible says he is now justified. He is now in right standing before the Father. And yet he still has issues because the Bible says that his mind still has to be renewed through the watering of the word. See, justification is instantaneous when we confess Jesus as our Lord. Sanctification is a process as we allow the Holy Spirit in us. To cleanse us. It's, you know, it's the Holy Spirit that keeps you far from temptation. It, it equips you. See, the Bible tells us this is, what, this is what the law couldn't do. The law was given so that you know what's right and wrong. But it didn't empower you to resist sin. Because you were still in your fallen nature. Though you had a knowledge of what's right and wrong. So the law was a symbolic of what was to come. And this is where the grace of God is so vitally, so vitally important. Through the process, so long as he stays in fellowship and in communion with God, so long as he continues to seek you feeling okay, bud? Oh, yeah. You feel all those eyes looking at you right now? Yeah, yeah pretty much. But you all right? Yeah. Okay, you're not sweating or anything like that? <laughs> so glad you were with us here today. I trust the Word of God richly bless you. For the continuation of this message, meet us here, same time, same channel, next week. May the Lord bless you as you increase in the knowledge of His Word. Thank you.